call on Captain Mamata to please say a few words to us. Hello, uh, my lovely dignitaries on the dais and wonderful girls out here and all the men who are here. I actually thought like when we talk about the men's women empowerment, I wanted half of the men to be here and half women to be here because we all in the urban areas especially are able to raise a girl as a boy, but we are not able to raise a boy as a girl. That is the main problem which is provocating to so many uh, antisocial things that is happening today in the society. As Swati ma'am said, that, you know, we, do, we, we try to control the girls, we try to say like, you know, you don't do this, you don't do that. But we don't do that with the boys. So they always feel like they are far apart. They are like licensed to do everything. So these are the small things which we need to control at home. Why women need to be empowered? Do we need empowerment or we are already empowered? How many of you feel we are empowered? All of us feel we are empowered. So we don't need any more empowerment, right? But we need to empower those who still feel they are not empowered. Right? We find many girls, either in the rural or in the urban, they find very difficult even to go and tell the parents what they want. They don't open their mouths in front of parents. How many of you are very vocal to your parents? So you discuss everything with your parents what you want? Or you feel even shy to ask what you want? No? So? Be more vocal. The more important thing in life is being vocal. Because unless you ask for it, unless you work for it, you will not get it. Right? So, when we are blessed being empowered, being in an urban place, we have better facilities. But think of those 80% of our population which is in rural. And as Dr. Vijayalakshmi said, that the girls drop out from the school because they don't have right toilets. So you imagine how painful and how pathetic it is. After so many years of our independence, still we are not able to go to school because we don't have toilets. So though government is doing all on their behalf, it is each of our responsibility to ensure that we all work for our country. And each of us can contribute a small thing in, its, in this line. It really makes a huge difference. I was, I've been associated with an organization called Vande Mataram Foundation. And Sir Lakshmi Narayanagaru also has come several times to us on that platform. And it's a very beautiful NGO which was trying to encourage the, only the government schools. They were concentrating only on government schools. And as in how they were going on inviting various uh, personalities from the industry and from the society, each of us could help these government schools grow in a better way. So if each of you can run one NGO like that, you imagine what our country is going to be. Yes? yes. So I want each of you to be entrepreneurs in running an NGO for our country. This will give a long way to both our boys and girls. Boys have some other problems too. It is not that all boys are very secured and they have everything very well. No, they also have some problems. So we need to address overall growth of our country and especially the girls. And in fact, you'll be surprised. I was surprised when I was reading an article uh, about UK. Andrew, sir, probably you might be knowing a little about this. Recently, I was reading an article called ironing of breast. I was surprised to hear that word, what is ironing of breast. So in UK, a very advanced country, have this old tradition wherein they keep, they take a hot stone, I mean they heat up a stone and they keep rubbing on the breast of the adolescent girls so that the breast doesn't overgrow. 
because that leads to an attraction and leads to rapes and other things. So you can imagine how this is happening even in an advanced country. It is not just we alone, all majority of the women all over the world suffer with various, some or the other problem. So it is for us to come over that. We have to work for it. Don't wait for somebody else to come and work for us. We individually have to work for ourselves and for the little community around us. That will bring in a lot of changes in our society. When it comes to cancer awareness, you know, for long, at least for the ta last 10 years, we are saying that there is a lot of programs happening. How many of you ever discuss this at home with your mothers or yourself? Did you ever discuss this in, at home with your mother or other women at home? No, because we feel that is not going to happen to us. All of us have that confidence that this is not going to happen to us. But it is not so. Let me tell you, for the past 10 years, from the time I gathered a little knowledge about this cancer, and especially a breast cancer in women, and breast examination, I'm telling you, today I survived because I had a self-analysis, self, uh, I uh, diagnosed my thing, and I went to the doctor, and I told him, I find a kind, a kind, of, a kind of a funny feeling under my arm, I'm finding a small kind of a, a granular cyst. So I didn't know what it was. And I was thinking it is some tiny thing which will just go away. So I went to the doctor and he told me, and he was unable to trace it. He was trying to check it and he was not able to get it. But I was able to feel it somewhere under my underarm. And when I, then he finally could feel it a little and he said, let us go for the test. And when I went for the test, I was detected with cancer. So, I being the pilot, it is very difficult. It's very difficult because for us, our medicals were very, very important. So, the day I was detected with cancer, I thought now my career is over and I need to do, take up only my administrative things in the school. But when it was detected, the only thought that came up to my mind is, see, I was detected at a zero level. It was at a zero stage. And my doctor said, nothing to worry. You will come out of it clean. You will be able to do your work back. And when I went, after eight months of my treatment, when I went back for my medicals, my aviation medicals, I was not very sure because we did not have any examples before mine uh, for the doctors to take a call whether they'll clear me for my medicals or not. So initially the doctors were apprehensive and they said, young lady, we don't know, we have to think over it, give us some time. So I, ha I was doing my research when I was at home during my treatment, the eight months, that it, it could not be me alone who would have had a problem. There are thousands of lakhs of pilots all over the world. I'm sure people might have faced these kind of problems elsewhere too. But I was unable to locate any information about a pilot having a breast cancer. But I was able to locate a lot of information on the net wherein the men had a prostate cancer or a blood cancer or some other, other, other cancers. So I took out all that information, made a notes of myself. I went to the doctor, my aviation doctor, and I gave him that information. I said, sir, if these men could fly, why not me? So he gave a thought about it. He took one day to analyze all my documents, and he cleared me the following day. And I've been flying from then till now again. So this little awareness that I had helped my life today to survive. If I did not have that awareness, probably I would have just thought it is another small cyst, it is growing and we'll take it out when it starts bothering us. It was not bothering me, it was not harming me, it was nothing, nothing. It was such a small thing that even doctor was unable to trace it on my body. So when the doctors, when you come to such seminars, when the doctors are giving you certain good advices, Please make sure, go back home, make it a practice. This will help a lot of your lives. Seriously, I'm telling you, your life, your other women at home, it's really going to help. And medical checkup annually for all the ladies crossing 30, please make sure, make it a practice. You can forego a ear ring or a finger ring, no problem, but don't stop your 
medical checkups. So unless you do that regularly and make it a practice and you have to show how important it is for you and, and nobody is going to come and do for you. You have to do for yourself, your mother, your sisters. So unless you get into this practice, you will not be able to appreciate life and you cannot enjoy the beautiful life the God has given you. So Vijay Lakshmi ma'am, we are all with you for this wonderful cause and we hope that all these young women who are here are going to really contribute for this cause and make our India a very beautiful place and a pride for our women here. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your personal views, your personal experience. Hi, Andy. Name me Jabara Sato Panchanam Prasad. Name me Varalakshmi. Hello, Andy. Name me Surugali Sudhir. Hi, hello. Name me comedian Kumar Swamini. Hello, name me Jabara Das Mukavinash. Hello, Andy. Name me Chitra Lekha. Hi, name me Machhi Madhvi. Na peru tadivelu. Please subscribe to Public Talk TV. Please subscribe Public Talk TV. Please subscribe Public Talk TV. Please subscribe to 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 Public Talk TV. 